This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It is a smorgasbord Friday here on Covering the Spread. We already touched on Friday's play-in games in the NBA with Tom Vecchio. Yesterday, we talked about the NBA playoff series as well with Tom. Got some player props for Saturday. So today, we're talking about the EPL. We're talking about MLB for Friday and NASCAR at Martinsville. It's going to be a blast. Here to break it down with me is Austin Cass. We'll talk EPL and then dive in to much more later on. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire. Joined here, as mentioned, by Austin Cass. You can find him on Twitter at Austin Cass. He is a senior editor for NumberFire. You can find his work over at NumberFire. Austin, you are fresh off a of vacation. Looking good. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. How are you? I am great. Ready to talk about some EPL because we've been making momentum. We've been uh, we've been making some strides. You left us with some really good recommendations for the NCAA tournament. So I've been deprived of Austin. I know we need vacations, but uh, how selfish of you to leave on a heater and deprive me of your knowledge. Very rude. Yeah, I'm sorry. I I did feel like we were moving in the direction of you gaining interest in the Premier League. And then the weekend I left was... Uh, we probably would have talked about Liverpool Arsenal and that ended up being one of the most entertaining games of the season so far. So it was bad timing. It's okay. We're going to bounce back here. Match week 31 and break down that and get Austin's thoughts on his favorite bets across this weekend and then dig into MLB and NASCAR. But first, a quick reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We, of course, aren't up a podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, you name it, you can find us there. And while you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating interview. We are here every weekday breaking down MLB, NBA, et cetera, et cetera, everything you could possibly want in one place. But let's start things off for today by talking about the EPL. It is a seven-game slate on Saturday, Austin. Uh, Pretty big slate, pretty big offering here. Anything stand out to you at FanDuel Sportsbook as far as bets you want to lock in for today? So there's two props that I'd like to talk about. The first one is in the very first match of the day, Aston Villa at Newcastle. It's a 7.30 start, which is obviously early for us here in the States. But I'm on uh, Alexander Izak to score or assist in that match, which is uh, minus 115. Mm -hmm. Um, Izak has really seized the number nine role for Newcastle lately, and they've been on fire playing as well as anyone in the league. As a team, they've scored at least twice in five straight matches. Um, Isaac's been a huge part of that. He's got five goals over his last five appearances, and he's got at least one goal in four of the last five games. He's also taken a penalty in that time, so that's a huge boost for this prop. So even though even though this is a far from easy matchup at Aston Villa, I like Isaac to score or assist at minus one fifteen. Yeah, again, minus 115. That's the Aston Villa versus Newcastle match to begin things on Saturday. Uh, Isak, minus 115 in that market. It's under the goal scorer market over at FanDuel Sportsbook. So you mentioned there are two props you like. That's the first one with Isak. What's the second one you're eyeing here? The other one is in the Manchester uh, City-Leicester City match, which is at 1230 tomorrow. So a little better timing-wise for us. Um, This is one. This is Julian Alvarez to score. Anytime goal scorer, minus 115. Um, And I'll throw the caveat out that he doesn't usually start, so I would wait until lineups come out, which is going to be at 1130 Eastern time. Make sure he's in there. Uh, This match for City, they're obviously huge favorites. I think minus 600 last I saw. Um, This is sandwiched between two Champions League quarterfinal matchups with Bayern Munich. They just played one last week, and they're going to play another one midweek next week. So I think they might rest Erling Holland which would likely result in Alvarez getting a start. So when he's had opportunities this year, he's been really great. He's got seven Premier League goals over seven starts, and he's averaging 0.73 goals per 90 minutes. Leicester's probably going to be overwhelmed against City. So as long as he starts, this is a bet I want to make. I just want to make sure he's confirmed as a starter before I place the bet. And those starters are confirmed 60 minutes before uh, the kickoff there for those. So that's uh, Julian Alvarez minus 115. When it comes to these teams that are playing in the UCL and they've got these really big matches, do we tend to see them play things a bit more conservatively on the EPL side when they have those going on? It just depends. Mm -hmm. Uh, City, 
have a lot to play for in the Premier League. They're in a tight title race with Arsenal right now. So they're not going to rest too many guys, I mm-hmm. wouldn't think. But having such an easy matchup gives them a chance to do that a little bit. They could bring Holland in off the bench if they wanted to. Um, if a team, maybe say like if Chelsea, they are still in the Champions League, but I believe they're 11th in the Premier League. They don't have anything to play for in the Premier League. So this weekend, we can see them really rest a lot of their guys because the really the opportunity cost doesn't really matter much for them in the Premier League right now. So with Man City, still a lot on the line here, but it sounds like Holland may potentially rest, which opened up some more minutes for Alvarez. He is minus 115 to score a goal for Man City against Leicester on Saturday. And you mentioned the the 7.30 game. For you, that's your East Coast time? Or I don't know yeah. where Indiana Falls. Yeah. Okay. You, <laughs> no, it, like, I guess we're in the Midwest. Which it goes back and forth, so right? Also, or something like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So we're but East you've got Coast, kids, right? so you're probably up at like 4.30. Just like, you know. <laughs> Yeah, harassing you at all times. Yes, I will be up in time for that game. So. Okay, good. So we get a little sandwich here with the the game at seven thirty, the game at twelve thirty between the Alvarez goal and then the Isak uh, goal or assist for the Aston Villa versus Newcastle match. Couple matches on Sunday as well, Austin. Uh, two in that one: West Ham versus Arsenal, and then Nottingham Forest against Manchester United. When you look at those two matches specifically on Sunday, anything you like across those at Fanduel? Yeah, I'm I'm intrigued by both of the underdogs, specifically mm-hmm. Nottingham Forest against Manchester United, and I'm going to be taking Forest and draw in the double chance market at plus one fifteen. Forest are absolutely in desperation mode as they try to avoid relegation, and getting anything from this match would be huge for them. And I think there's reasons to think they can get at least a draw. They've been really good at home this year. They've lost just once over their last eleven home league matches a span that includes a draw against Manchester City and a win over Liverpool. So they've they've played well against good teams. United, meanwhile, have been pretty subpar away from home. They're just 14th in away goal differential this season at minus 12, and they've won only six of their 14 road matches. On top of that, they just played Thursday last night in the Europa League. And so Forrest is going to have the rest advantage. And not only did United play in that game, but they lost both of their center backs. They exited early due to injury, and they probably, I'm guessing, will not be able to play this weekend. They're also going to be without Marcus Rashford, who's their top goal scorer. He's got 15 league goals, while no other United player has more than five. So he's going to be a big miss. So basically, we have a team in force that's been really good at home, a team in United that hasn't been good away from home, and United's going to be have a big rest disadvantage and be shorthanded. So I think there's a lot of reasons to think Forrest can get at least a draw from this game. So again, that's the, the double chance market. Nottingham Forest and draw is plus 115 right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Is this a market you go to often where you get to group two different outcomes together? Or is it more so in specific circumstances like this where you think they need that point and they're going to fight for whatever they can to get at least that? Yeah, it's, it's more so the latter, especially mm-hmm. I, I kind of like this market for bigger underdogs sure. because yeah. you're not taking quite as big of a swing on betting right. on them to win, but uh, it's still a plus money number. And this number is actually plus 125 last night before exactly. United had their two injuries. So I wish I could have come on yesterday and <laughs> had people make this bet before that. But uh, yeah, I really like this market for them. And like the name of the bark, it's a double chance. So yeah, I feel pretty good about Forest tomorrow. Yeah, so that's plus 115 right now, as you mentioned, for Nottingham Forest against Manchester United. That is a Sunday match. So you can find that right there. And uh, I do like the the bundling of things together there. It's kind of like an each way in golf where you split up your your bet. You can get money if they finish. You know, they have, you have the outright if they do get that, but they're also some on top three and stuff like that as well. So it's nice yeah, to- Yeah, that's a good comparison. Yeah, to get a little bit there, podium bets for NASCAR, stuff like that. All right, that is Austin Cass. Make sure you check him out on uh, Twitter at Austin Cass. Find his work over at Number Fire. He does have a full uh, betting primer up for Match Week 31. Find that over on the website. Austin, it is a pleasure to have you back. Excited to have you back in the mix. Uh, and good luck to you this weekend. 
Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Same to you. Check out Austin again on Twitter at Austin Cats. Again, if you want to read the version of the betting guide, that is over on Number Fire uh, for the EPL Match Week 31. We're going to dive in, talk some baseball for Friday and some NASCAR at Martinsville in one second. But first, the NBA playoffs are here, and you can turn crossovers into cash with FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel right now and place a $5 bet and you'll get an instant 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook. Just go to FanDuel and sign up to get $150 in bonus bets when you bet your first $5. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with the Kansas Star Casino LLC. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. Hope is here in, in Massachusetts. Call or go to gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, one 877 hope and wire Text hope and why. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mvgamblinghealth.org. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's shift focus now and talk about some Major League Baseball for today. Got a full 15 games on the slate today across Major League Baseball. There are four money lines I like, and then there are a couple strikeout props I want to bet, assuming they have not moved since I was looking at things earlier on today. The first money line is going to be for the Angels and the Red Sox. I like the, the uh, Red Sox money line at plus 104, and I know this can be tough mentally after having watched the Red Sox boot balls across the yard all day yesterday their defense sucks and that matters a lot as we saw in that game it's an abomination but my model does account for defense and it knows that they suck and it does still show value on them here the one hesitation I have is that it could be a bigger issue with their defense today because Tanner Houck is a ground ball pitcher he is our starter for today but Houck has looked good to open this year He's getting stretched out uh, from being largely in the bullpen last year. It seems like that transition for him has not been too difficult. So I'm accounting for the defense here. I know the defense is bad. I know it's going to probably continue to be bad until they get some you know, new guys in there. But I've got the Red Sox win odds at 58% up from 49% implied. It's possible I'm underselling how big of a detriment it is to have Bobby Dahl back at shortstop and stuff like that. But I think this number is overselling it a bit. So uh, it's a bit dramatic. Plus 104, the number on the Red Sox money line. I know it can be tough mentally to click to to click that, given the way things have gone, given the way they may continue to go until they get a solution in there for the defense. But I do think this number may be overselling things a little bit. So the Red Sox plus 104, the first money line. Second one I want to go to is the Twins at plus 160 against the Yankees. Full disclosure here, I grew up a Twins fan, so... Uh, if you want to be skeptical, totally justified, but that is not factored into the number here. My model is a Twins win odds at 44.9% versus 38.5%. So still not, you still favor in the Yankees for sure. They're at 55% to win, but pretty well above market here on the Twins. They're starting Louis Varland was supposed to be Tyler Malley initially, but Malley pushed back one day. Varland. Not a ton of experience in the majors, a five-star sample last year, and he did pitch pretty well, 4.14 uh, skill interactive ERA, so that wasn't bad. Not a bad debut for Varland, actually did make his first start at Yankee Stadium last year as well. Twins missing some key pieces. I don't think Jorge Polanco or Max Kepler will be back yet. Uh, they are on a rehab assignment right now, so they won't have them, but Byron Buxton did play in a last night's game. Edouard Julien made his debut as well, which was pretty nice, so... Despite being down some key pieces, still a decent Twins offense as we saw last night where they went bananas. Facing Nestor Cortez, Cortez had that stretch last year where he was unreal, shutting everyone down. Hasn't been quite the same since then. My numbers do still view him as being pretty good. 3.82 skill interactive ERA in his nine starts with fewer sliders. That's a pretty good number, but... 
Twins very good against lefties, even with their all the injuries they've had. Um, I think Varlin might be a bit undersold by this number. So Twins at plus 160 is another money line I'm willing to go to, even though I do have the Yankees favored by my numbers. The next one does depend on where you're shopping. Uh, right now, FanDuel Sportsbook has the Orioles at minus 110 to beat the White Sox. You can get them as low as minus 105 elsewhere. So take a look at available books. Try to identify the best spot. But I think the Orioles, regardless of where they're at, at your book, are a value based on my numbers. I'm at 62% to win, which is probably a bit high. Uh, that might be a bit high. But direct directionally, I agree with what the model is saying. I've got them uh, that high in large part because I'm skeptical of Mike Clevenger. Clevenger, in the first two starts, is a good ERA. The underlying data is really rough. And in a two-start sample, I will always trust the underlying data more so than the results. Now, underlying data doesn't stabilize across two starts either because strikeouts are typically take about 50 or so plate appearances to stabilize, walks 60 to 70, ground ball rates around... 80 balls in play, I believe. And we're not there yet for most of those. So he could be a guy where the underlying data is underselling him because it is a small sample, but his expected ERA is really, really high. And I trust that more than uh, what the, the current numbers are saying. He's not getting whiffs right now. His, his swinging strike rate is on 7%. Opposing batters are making pretty quality contact. So maybe it's a two-star blip. Maybe Clevenger is pitching as well as what the results have said, I'm skeptical right now. And that does put me on the Orioles here. I also think Tyler Wells is pretty okay as a pitcher. So shop around on Baltimore, try to find what you can get there. Uh, minus one Oh five, I think is the best number you can get. There has been some movement towards uh, the white Sox here. So maybe we'll see more of that, but I'm comfortable with the Orioles right now. Minus one ten at FanDuel Sportsbook, buying into this Orioles offense, selling Clevenger from what he's done so far and get exposure to them via that the final money line for me today is in a seven o'clock game uh that's a guardians they are favored at minus 154 against the nationals i think that should be a bit wide. i've got the guardians at 64.8 percent to win the implied odds here at minus 154 60.6 percent facing trevor williams who is back in a starting role hasn't looked superb so far there is a reason he'd been shifted to a a more secondary long relief role in other spots so he struggled there. Cal Quantrill starting for the Guardians has not been lights out either, but the Guardians have an elite bullpen. They have an elite defense behind him, and those things can help negate a more mid-tier starting pitcher. The Guardians were very high in my power rankings before the year started, and they have fallen down from there, from where they initially were due to some injuries and stuff like that. But they have not fallen to the point where I don't want to bet them as a modest favorite against a rough opponent. So the Guardians, minus 154, the final money line I want to take. Again, buying into a team I like coming into this year, facing a pretty rough team. I think that makes a lot of sense. So the money lines in MLB today I like. Uh, the Red Sox, plus 104. Twins, plus 160. Orioles, shop around for the best number, but minus 110 at FanDuel Sportsbook. And the Guardians, a minus 154 against the Nationals. Couple of strikeout props. I have not rechecked these since we started recording, so don't know if they are still where they were earlier on today. The first one I want to check on, though, is in the Blue Jays versus the Rays game. Jose Barrios is starting here for the Blue Jays and facing a team with a lot of lefties. And under four and a half strikeouts for Barrios is plus 104. I think that is a very fine number and one I am willing to take. My model has Barrios uh, projected for 4.28 strikeouts here, so pretty tough to pass up plus money on the under. Barrios is a guy who, throughout his career, honestly, has struggled quite a bit with lefties, and the Rays between their switch hitters like Wander Franco and all their lefties, I would bet they roll out a pretty lefty heavy lineup for tonight. They've got Lau and Lowe. Uh, they've got uh, Luke Rayleigh in there. They can plug in. They've got a lot of lefties. They can turn to if they see a guy like Barrios who struggles versus lefties. Barrios has had that issue for a while, but now looking at the early data in 2023, seems like the issue is maybe bleeding over into what he does against righties too. So eventually we will see the Rays cool off. You can't win every game in a major league baseball season. So they're going to cool off eventually, but they are a, a good team uh, against righties. They've got a lot of lefties to take advantage of Barrios' issues. I'm fine continuing to buy into them via this market. So I like Barrios under four and a half strikeouts, plus 104 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. I think that is a very fair number. If you want to buy into the Rays, sell Barrios' struggles without 
getting two out over your skis with regards to the Blue Jays. The second strikeout prop one to check on here is in the Pirates versus Cardinals game. And right now, uh, Jake Woodford over three and a half strikeouts is minus 104. I will say, if you go to other books, I believe you can still get over two and a half. It's at like minus 200. So I'd rather go with the three and a half at minus 104 personally, but would look around, see what you can get on Woodford because potentially could get a better number somewhere else. But um, I have Woodford projected for 4.26 strikeouts here. He has struggled across his first two starts from a results perspective, but despite those struggles, still three strikeouts and five strikeouts. Again, the number here is three and a half. 95 pitch for Woodford in his first start. So he is fully stretched out. The Pirates active roster that he'll face today, 23.9% strikeout rate versus righty since the start of last year. So 3.5, not a big number for Woodford. Um, He is a low strikeout guy. He's transitioning to being a starter from being a reliever in the past. So there are a lot of reasons to be skeptical, but it's a low number. He's stretched out facing a high strikeout team that does struggle and is without their best hitter right now. So I do think that the over here is very in play. So strikeout props, Barrios under four and a half at uh, plus 104. Shop around on that one too, because he was plus 120 earlier on this morning at some other spots. And then Woodford over three and a half at minus 104, which you can find right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. That's going to wrap up baseball for today. But do still want to talk some NASCAR here because we have uh, all three series in action in Martinsville for this weekend. In the Cup Series, looking for value here, we had Chase Elliott added to the entry list, and when he was added, didn't see a lot of guys lengthen, so it's a pretty tough market to bet into right now, not seeing a whole lot that I like. The one bet that I like that I want to highlight here is in the top 10 market for Martinsville in the NASCAR Cup Series. That's Eric Almirola at plus 230. Uh, The implied odds there, 30%. I have Almirola at 36% to finish inside the top 10. We talk about Almirola a lot on short flat tracks. And Martinsville fits in that description. It is not his best track in this track type by any means. He's better at Phoenix. I think he's a little bit better at uh, a lot better at New Hampshire as well. So it's not his best track within this track type, but it has still been a track where he's been inside the top 10 with pretty decent regularity. He's been to Martinsville 10 times since joining Stuart Haas racing in those 10 times, Almarola five top 10. So a 50% rate. Again, the implied odds here are 30%. And he's not the same driver that he was earlier on because Stuart Haas Racing has fallen off a bit. But last year, Almarola, one top 10 finish in two races, a decent average running position in both those races too. So he's been struggling so far this year on the short flats. Uh, And Phoenix had an issue. Richmond didn't run that great. But Phoenix, he was working his way through the pack before a tire issue ruined his day. I think that he would have at least pushed for a top 10 had that kind of fluky tire issue not happened. So I'm not as worried about the the four. Maybe I should be more worried, but plus 230 for a top 10, I think is a very fair price. So in the Cup Series, the one uh, the one top 10 that I want to lock in is Eric Alvarola at plus 230 with practice of that set for tomorrow morning. Shifting focus now and talking about the NASCAR Xfinity Series, I'm very close to value on Cole, uh, Cole Custer. He is plus 750 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. I I have him at exactly 11.8%, so I'm right in line with the market there, but that's not value. So if you find Custer longer than plus 750, I would take a look at that because I do think that is intriguing. I do like outside of FanDuel. You can find these at William Hill Shops. They have top fives for the Xfinity Series. I do like Brandon Jones top five at plus 160. I have Jones in the top five 41% of the time. His implied odds there, 38.5%. So it's a small edge, but it is enough. If you can get Jones outright at 12 to one or longer, he is 10 to one at FanDuel. I believe he's, or he's 11 to one at FanDuel. He has shortened uh, to 10 to one at some other spots. If you can find him at 12 to one still, I did take 12 to one either yesterday or Wednesday. I believe it's yesterday. So maybe there's still a 12 out there on Jones. I would rather take the top five because to get top five does need to beat out all of John Hunter Nemechek, Chandler and Sammy Smith, Justin Allgaier, all these guys who are very good on this track type. So I prefer Jones top five plus 160. Good value for me. Decent value for me. If you can get 12 to one, I think that is intriguing. The kind of the one outright I want to place, but for outrights and Xfinity series, not seeing a whole lot for this week. The final one. Uh, is the NASCAR truck series, uh, the Craftsman truck series that is going to be on, I believe this is 
uh, they're practicing today. I think that the race for that is either tonight or tomorrow. Either way, my favorite two bets of this weekend are both in the NASCAR truck series. The first one is an outright. It's the only outright I want to lock in for this week. That is Ross Chastain, who is, for some reason, 8-1 to one to win at FanDuel Sportsbook. I have him at 24% to win. I'm way above market. That's very scary. Usually, if you are way off in the market, you're the dummy. The market is correct. And I know that. And I'm scared having this much value on Ross Chastain. His implied win odds, 11% at 8-1 to at FanDuel Sportsbook. The reason my numbers are high are a bunch. Um, He's driving for Nice Motorsports, who has some rough drivers and they're stable. But, you know, Carson Hosevar is a good driver and he is competitive in these trucks. So if Carson Hosevar can be competitive in a Nice truck, why would we not expect Ross Chastain to be that? Host of ours went on this week 40 to 1 in large part because Kyle Busch and Chastain are in the field, but he is competitive on this track type. So I expect Chastain to be the same. Chastain at Circuit of the Americas running the same truck. He, I think, maybe because I had bet him there too, I think he was on track to win that race, but had a fuel pump issue, had some pit strategy break against him, and he went up finishing inside the top five still, but had the potential to win that one against Kyle Busch, against Zane Smith, and all those guys. This number, 24% for me on Chastain, is not because my model is underselling Kyle Busch. It has done that at times, but I've got Busch at 45.7% to win this race. So with that much win equity going to Kyle Busch, I feel a bit better about having Chastain up at 24%. Looking at this one, I, I think we just kind of take it. Uh, Chastain 8-1 to one, I think is too long. So Ross Chastain 8-1, to one, the one outright I like for NASCAR across all three series for this week. The other bet I really like here, Stuart Friesen, top five at plus 220. You can find this uh, at William Hill Books. The implied odds at plus 220 are 31.3%. I've got Friesen at 41%. And in the top five, Friesen doesn't have to top, doesn't have to top uh, Kyle Busch, Ross Chastain. And he's a guy who tends to run really well on short tracks. He is a dirt racer, which doesn't really apply super well to Martinsville because it is a single groove track and stuff like that. But Friesen has had good runs here in the past. Zane Smith, one of the other contenders, doesn't tend to run as well on short tracks as he does on big tracks. He's more mortal on this track type. So Ty Majeski, very good here. I do My model likes him a lot, and I like him as well. But Friesen, I think, is undervalued. So plus 220 top five for Stuart Friesen uh, is my second favorite bet this week, followed by or preceded by the Chastain outright at 8-1. to one. So again, two favorite bets for me this week, both in the truck series, Chastain 8-1, to one, Friesen uh, plus 220 to finish inside the top five. Other ones I'm looking at, uh, Brandon Jones top five in the Xfinity series at plus 160, and Eric Almarola top 10 at plus 230 in the Cup series. As I said, a lot of stuff covered here today on Covering the Spread. Want to give a big thank you once again to Austin Cass for swinging by and breaking down his thoughts on the EPL. Check out Austin on Twitter at Austin Cass and find his work over at Numberfire. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Uh, again, if you want some, some NBA playoff talk, check that out on yesterday's show. With Tom Vecchio, broke down the play-in games tonight and the playoff series beginning Saturday, including some player props for those. Find that on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Hit subscribe, and if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. I hope you all have fantastic weekends. Good luck to you with your bets. We'll talk to you once again on Monday. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 